to mangle you green slime balls. Welcome to the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Water Cup Zero. Actually, I looked at our analytics and we're primarily just all male between the ages of like 26 and 35. That's our primary audience. Good. So we just assume we're talking to them. Good. I don't want to talk to small children. They they frighten me. I wouldn't say they frighten me. They just make me uncomfortable with their <laughs> bad life decisions and yeah. being 15. Yeah. Are we this is this was this the start of it? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, this yeah. is the podcast. This is welcome to the podcast. Speaking of 15-year-olds, Friggin' Slipknot's coming to town, and I'm, uh, and yeah. they're being opened by two good bands, and then Slipknot and Volbeat. I didn't know you classified Slipknot as a good band. No, uh, they're being opened by good bands. Oh, like, good bands, got it. They're being opened with by Gojira and Bohemoth. 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 Bo- yes. Bohemoth. Hunting Bohemoth. All right. Anyway, I don't know why I had that rant about Slipknot. Anyway. Because they suck. Anyway. Hey, welcome to the podcast. Uh, Sorry. Uh, well, Tom's not here today. Cause Tom that's, was, why, that's why it's just rambling nonsense right yeah, now. Yeah, there's no constructive construction. You know what? I'm done. I'm quite, can't talk today. Christ, Tom. Um, is it just going to be... Is it going to be Ando playing as DS and me <laughs> just talking about how much I hate Slipknot? Is that what, yeah. the, is that what the podcast is going to be? I have a stroke. You... Drink and talk about Slipknot and Anna yeah. plays Pokemon. Um, like a so man. So, our 4 in February recap. That's what we're here to talk about. What, I think Tom and I are the only ones that uh, actually finished. Or yeah. did you, Adam? Nope. I no. never finished Hellblade. Was that the only one you had left? Yep. Yeah. And it shouldn't have, it, I shouldn't have put it off as long as I did. Hellblade, Hellblade's not Hellblade, that long of a game. It right? really isn't. I got but it. But it's a sad game, and you kind of yeah. you kind of go through periods where you really don't want to play it. That's why I kind of stopped playing it. Well, it's guys, really good, but you guys go through yours, and I'll I'll go last since well, I actually finished. I guess I should go first since I have the least amount of games <laughs> completed. Tell them how many you've completed, Bird. So I only beat one. Boo. I only beat uh, the shape shifting detective, which was really really good. Uh, Sorry, I'm still listening. I'm just trying to see if my, my DS works now after throwing it in the, on the floor. In a video probably from the past when this airs. In the past. Um, anyway, so yeah. So, um, yeah. FMV, like, uh, like detective game. You, like, switch into people's bodies to, like... Still works. To, to, uh, <laughs> thanks. Uh, to, to, get, to get information out of different people by asking them questions as other people. Um, it's randomly generated, so there's a different killer every time. It's got some supernatural elements and some other stuff. I actually did guess the killer right on the first try, which was pretty good. And uh, you get some different epilogues based on there's uh, there's one character who can live or die depending on your actions, uh, and uh, you can decide like what you want to do. You can like stay in the town and help like the police, or you could um, you can like help these. Uh, they're like terror readers. They're like in the town I trying to you help just said find. Terror read. There's terror read in it. Yeah, yeah. terror read and her gross hor- pepperoni nipples. Her horrible <laughs> career. And her, and her strange titties, um, but I really, really enjoyed it. It kind of ended, it, much like when I played Doctor Decker. It felt like it ended a little abruptly and a little bit anticlimactically, but it was still really good. Hmm. Um, the other thing with that is that the co- the people who made that game and the Doctor Decker game are doing a live Doctor Decker where they where they like hired a new actress. To like do improv like on a stream and like people ask her questions, and that's happening probably in the past. But by the time you hear this, but I'm sure there'll be video up on it somewhere. So that was interesting. Uh, I I I tried to get through. I got through a good bit of the missing, but I kept getting stuck and kept getting frustrated, and so I didn't finish that. Uh, got, still got really fr- got uh, got through a couple more chapters of. Uh, of Octopath, but still I didn't even get to any of the Chapter 4 areas for any of the characters. That's a but, long game, isn't it? It's pretty long. But Part of my problem with 4 in February is I always feel like 
I should do at least one RPG to try to get... Because there's so many RPGs I've never finished that I got really, really far in. And I thought at the time... Like, at the end of January, I was still, like, in that... Octopath is really good. It's really interesting. And then the problem is, is you get to a boss area, and because there's eight different characters, you're trying to all get them around the same level... And you get to a boss and there's, like, one character who keeps dying. Or if you don't know, like, what breaks the the boss's armor, it's really hard to I, to do the boss. Okay, so how how this game works, I have a question. Um, Go ahead. Because every time you talk about this, I just want to, like, make the Dragon Quest Four reference. Because that's how I feel like this game works, but I'm sure it isn't. Um, does each do you have to play each chapter like this character you play this character's chapter and then it goes to the next character's chapter but when you start the next character's chapter they're at level one no what how does this game work it starts off you pick a character that is your main character that you cannot take that character out of your party right throughout the game you get seven other characters with you you have have a party of four so you start off the first character you're by yourself you do their character you do their chapter one when you do that it'll show you hey this is where you can do this character this is where you can do this character and it goes around the map of where you can find these characters for their story you do their story, you pick them up, and then you go on, and then you do... You, well, you don't have... Technically, you don't have to finish everyone's chapter. You probably don't even have to pick everybody up. But you you go through, you do... Basically, once you do everyone's chapter one, and then go on to everybody's chapter two. And you do them one by one. No, oh, okay. So, I was there's only it. four chapters, plus I'm sure there's like a final area or something like that. But because... I tr- what I try to do is like okay I'll use this with this area I'll use these three characters plus my main guy and I'll level them up a bunch and then you go to the next one and you got to do a bunch more leveling with the characters you didn't use to try to get them up because like sometimes it'll be like oh chapter two for this person you it suggests you be level fifteen and then the next one will be like it'll suggest you're like level nineteen. So, so it kind of directs you in certain areas that it wants you to go. I was thinking it was like in Dragon Quest, uh, Dragon Quest Four. The way they do it is that like the um, well, at least the DS version, the original Nintendo version is different. But the three D, the DS remake, the way they do it is that you play the like prologue chapter where you're the main hero, okay. and you play through his chapter or her chapter. Don't right. don't assume the hero's gender. <laughs> You uh, you play the first like prologue and it's the hero, the main character, like the main character, or whatever, and you do like a little bit of that, and like through that chapter, everything just basically low level, whatever, and then you do chapter two and it's a new character, and it's they start out like level one and they're like they get up to like maybe like level five or six or whatever. It's just like everything's low level. Right. And then you go to chapter three, new character, chapter four, new character. And then like the final chapter is like uh, all of the the hero, all the characters from the chapter two and on are like meeting up with the hero from the first chapter. And like they're all mixed levels, which is really annoying. And then like the hero, when you gra- when you catch up with the hero, He's like level five when at that point some of them are like level twenty or higher yeah. and it's frustrating. But like the first the first battle you get in, everyone like kind of like levels up with they kind of like catch up a little. Yeah. And it makes it kind of hard. I never finished that one because of that, and that's probably the same reason you're feeling about like yeah, Octopath. It, it's, it's like it's everyone's kind of unbalanced. Sim- it's kinda of similar. What what it is is because you have the you, whoever you pick first you can't that's your main character throughout the game, like that 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 person's always going to be higher level, but the problem is is that even if that guy's higher level, especially with with any enemy or any bosses, you, you're not gonna like, he's not gonna like kill enemies in one hit, 
Like, enemies right. always have a lot of health. And the system is, is that there's different types of magic and weapons. And each enemy will have a set amount of armor. And you have to do that many hits of damage with a certain... Like, you don't know what their what their weakness types are, but you either, there's a there's one character who has magic that will you get that will show you like you know one of their of weaknesses. Right. <laughs> or if you hit them with that, then it'll show up and it'll show you and so you have to they call it a break. And basically you need to have uh, enough of a variety in in play styles of the different characters plus you find different uh, you find different shrines that will let other characters use the other playstyles of the of the other characters. So you basically have two playstyles for each character. Mm. So you have to you have to you can change them. But I've been doing it like oh well I have I have this character's main one and then another one and that gives them a wide enough playstyle but makes th- but they're similar enough. You know the two playstyles are similar enough that they're they don't have. A, you know, stats that don't match up. Like, I'm not going to put a magic user and then have them do, like, a fighting style with, like, a sword that doesn't use any magic with it because that means that they're, you know, the higher their magic use, the better. Right. Because they're already a magic user. So, so it's a, it's just... The, the grinding in it is weird. Uh, I'm sure if, you, if you're going to... If you're going to play this game... Find find a good beginner's guide because that's probably what I should have done. Also, I picked a character like I saw a video that was like, "Here are the least annoying characters in Octopath," and I'm like, "Okay, this guy looks okay. Like he's one of the like it was basically a Polygon video, and they were like, "Oh, th- these are the least annoying ones." But my favorite character is the Hunter, and she is basically she's almost like a Pokemon user where you can like like creatures in the world you like weaken them and then you could capture them and then she could like throw them out with so many uses hmm. so and i really like that and i wish i i wish she was my main character because i like use i like that more than the main one i'm using so so out of so you've only cleared two no i only cleared one. Oh, okay that's right that was the, the, so, the only one i cleared of- was that so, out of the ones you've cleared, what would you rate them? <laughs> so, out of the one you cleared, well, rank I mean, it amongst not, the other I mean, one you cleared. You, you know? can you can rate the other ones if you want, even though you didn't finish them. But I mean, well, quickly, I'll talk about about uh, Oxen Free. Oxen Free, oh, I recently yeah. downloaded on uh, Xbox One. Um, it it's got a imagine if. Is that that weird, like, first-person game? No. What am I thinking of? I don't know. Oxen I'm Free, of... Oxen oh, Free is like a... It looks... It's like a side 2D view. It's it's panned out really far, and it's basically you're a bunch of high school kids. You go to this island, and you use, like, radios to find certain frequencies. There's some weird, like, UFO stuff going around. But it's mostly... It's got, like, a, like a talking mechanic, kind of like... Like... It came out around the same time that Life is Strange came out. So imagine if Life is Strange, like, was, felt like it was written by a human and not by an alien. Not that I dislike Life is Strange, but, like, some of that dialogue seems a little off, you know what I mean? Hmm. And, like, so there would be, you play as, like, as this, this girl... And, like, her stepbrother's there and one of her friends, and you're going to this island for this party, and then everyone goes missing. So, when you're talking to someone, dialogue options will pop up, and they'll they'll keep talking to you. They won't stop and, like, wait for you to give a dialogue. Sure. So, you can either give a dialogue, or you can just go about whatever you're doing. And there's puzzles and stuff like that, where you have to use the... And I've played through a good bit of it before, but I went back and restarted it on Switch because I bought it on Switch. Like that, for some reason, that was the first thing I bought when I bought my Switch. Um, is I downloaded that on the eShop, um, and I just I, I couldn't get back into it. I wanted to I put it on my four in February because I wanted to beat it. I just didn't get back into it. Unfortunately, I wanted to I wanted to finish Shape Shifting Detective. I was far enough in in the missing. I wanted to finish that, and I just. 
I started it a little bit, and I just didn't go through it enough. So, um, I, I, I'd probably give Oxen Free for as much as I've played. I'd probably give it a seven. Um, I'd like to see what the ending is. I know that's another one that, like, depending on how you treat certain characters, you'll get like a better ending or you'll save them or whatever. I was thinking of the witness. The witness. Because I was oh, like, oh god. Because I was like, I confused that with like, a, I was like, is that a first person game? And I'm like, it was on PS Plus, wasn't that, it? Yeah, that and was I looked it up. And blow game. And it's it's the witness. I'm like, maybe that's the one where there's like no dialogue and no characters, and all yeah. it is is first person puzzles. That's what I thought. That I played I played was. a little bit of that, and uh, but it's it, not for don't me. Don't worry about it. Just say what you're yeah. saying. <laughs> so I'd probably give Oxen Free a seven. I'd like to finish it uh, at some point. I'm going to finish it. The missing is probably an eight. Um, that's another one that, like, I really like the stories. The puzzles are, like, interesting enough. I love Sweary. I want to finish it. That's probably going to be an 8 for me. Um, depending on what the ending is and how good the ending is, it could probably raise that up a little bit. Uh, Octopath is probably, like, a 7 or an 8. It's just one of those, like, I'd probably give it a 7 right now just because there's a little too much grinding for me. But sure. I like the characters and the story. Um... Uh, the one I finished was uh, the Shape Shifting Detective. I'd probably give that an eight and a half, almost a nine. Like I said, it, with those games, it's just kind of like, okay, who do you think the who do you think the killer is? And then you pick one, and then it's like, it's either like, no, I didn't do that, or it's like, well, yeah, it uh, it was me. Uh, it turns out that you got it right, and uh, yeah. So like when I when I when I did my playthrough, and this isn't a spoiler because it changes every time, it was like there's a male tarot reader, and basically there's usually like one little clue that stands out of like who did what, and not to give it away. Well, uh, basically you found out it was him. There's a clue where he's like, well I don't remember what happened that night, but I came back and my hands hurt. Why did my hands hurt? No. And you're like, oh, right. yeah. he strangled her to death. Yeah, That was the thing that gave it away. So was that the best one out of the ones that you played? Uh, yeah. I mean, I yeah, probably. Um, the Missing was really good. Um, and I'm not sure I liked it. I think it's kind of different. It's kind of a little bit with the shape-shifting like, stuff. I'm sure there's other, like, I, I don't think I uncovered a lot of, like, backstory about, like, what happens in the town. There's a lot of, like, there's, like, a mysterious thing where, like, oh, you did this shady thing and, like, they're doing this to help you because you did a thing that was bad. So this is, like, your redemption arc. Yeah. And they're, like, I found out there's a, there was a lot more to dig up and uncover in Dr. Decker. So I think that's kind of why I like that a little bit more. Um, but I think Dr. Decker's a little bit harder to go back to because I feel like I got, I dug everything up. I, that's the, I, that's the terrible thing with the, like detective like mystery games like that. It's like once you play through it once, like you can't really play it again. Sure. Yeah, I, I mean there is some replayability because like because you because like with that, there's different killers every time. But if you know like if you know. <laughs> If you know enough about the characters and you've already played through it, like you can you can you can kind of tell like what's off about them. Right. Like the first one I pl like when I played Dr. Decker, that one was like that one is like you're you're not a detective, you're a you're a psychiatrist and right. the the do the other doctor was killed. So why was he killed? Well, no one liked him all this other stuff. The one woman... It's just you can see through it because Yeah, it's you can see through right. it. The one woman was like, she brought her husband back to life and then she killed the husband. Right. So when she kills the husband is when it like... And her ending was weird because it's like, well, I didn't really kill him. He just killed himself and I just didn't bring him back to life. Yeah. So it was like, wait, did I just get the right ending? It's like, I guess I did. I guess she was the killer. So it was bizarre, but I, that was probably the best. I, I really did like Dr. Decker, or... Uh, shape-shifting detective so adam adam yeah all right so i had i beat three of the four games the only game i did not beat was hellblade said it was sacrifice it's the only one i didn't beat um probably because i started it late it's not that it's a long game i am enjoying what i played so far but i think we were talking about it before is that the game is emotionally heavy yeah. so like you play it for so long you're like, 
oh, okay, I need to stop. <laughs> um, and, it, and the sounds and everything, I mean, it does make you feel like you're schizophrenic. What I do like about the game, because I've gotten to the part where I realized, am I going fucking nuts? Because you'll turn the corner <laughs> and something will be there. You're like, all right, that clearly wasn't there before. Yeah. Or you like, you have to question yourself, like, was that there before? I don't remember it being, because it happens so fast and it's so blended in with the scenery that sometimes you're like, am I an idiot? But once I'm catching on, I'm like, okay, clearly the game is trying to fuck with me. Yeah. And I like that, because it, it caught me off guard the first time I noticed it. Um, so, it's far right now. I mean, that, that game's a solid eight. Uh, I, I haven't beaten it yet. Um, um, so, what's the next one? Uh, Guacamelee 2, I did beat. Um, wasn't terribly long. I beat it in about eight hours, but I know I did not see everything. And I felt like I kind of rushed it. The first one, I played the shit out of and like tried 100% it. Yeah. Um, I feel like I could do that with this, but I it, because it was 4 in February, I'm like, all right, finish it. Let's let's be done. Um, I, that's a solid 9. Those games are so good. 9, yeah. easy. Oh, that they're, It's just the same. The humor is fucking hilarious. The gameplay is tight. Um, I mean, it doesn't add too much to it, but I think it plays better than the original did um, in the complexity of the areas and the moving and um, but it's essentially kind of the same game, but better. Anyway. There's like better power-ups or whatever? Or? They're about the same. Like the, the move sets that you have, but like the puzzles and the the mobility of... Well, the whole chicken thing in the dark. Yeah, you oh, yeah. the chicken. It's, it's just like, it took everything from the first game and just added a few more better things. Which, great. Great. I mean, more power to them, because it was it was an excellent game. Dreadbox uh, is a great studio. They really are. Um, uh, da, 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 what was the other ones? Oh, um, first game that I did beat was... Um, uh, um, Red Dead? No, no, Half-Life, the um, remake, Black Mesa. Oh, uh, yes. Alright, so, after beating it, I realized, oh shit, when Black Mesa was in beta, they were kind of giving out the game for free. I beat it then, and I had no idea that I beat that whole game. <laughs> I thought it wasn't done yet, which it isn't still done. It, they don't have the whole... The Zen part, the Zen, yeah. Exactly, that's still not in it. But I beat it, and I'm like, all right, I'm at the end of the game. Like, oh shit, I actually did play this before. <laughs> but it's it's the finished version of Black Mesa. Right. That I think you're gonna get for now, at least anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that that part, I beat both when it was in beta, and they were still, and it still had the crouch jump bullshit. <laughs> oh man. Um, now the game plays exactly like Half Life Two did, and it, it was it's fantastic. It's so good. Please, if you haven't played it, or someone, I mean, <laughs> just buy it. It's great. Um. It looks good. It plays well. It's it's the best version of Half Life One. I think the only reason I didn't play the I don't I think I didn't play Black Mesa when I did my Half Life playthrough was because it just wasn't finished. No, and they don't, they didn't do they didn't do Zen yet. So the original is so I mean even the the beta version of it is so frustratingly. It, it I mean it's like the first game, but yeah. it's so frustrating that the second. This play, there's they added a lot more to it. It's better polished. It's just yeah. a much better game now. I How mean, long have they been working on that? Years. A long time. And yeah. Valve is like, do it. Have fun. Because yeah, <laughs> like, we're not going to do anything. Yeah, we're sure shit not going to make this game better I, than hunt down the Freeman. So yeah. Um, and then the last game I did play and beat um, was Red Dead Two. Um, fucking loved it. Um, I know Bird and Tom aren't the biggest fans of Rockstar storytelling. Uh, oh. uh, I just I, it. I just noticed the tropes. I really yeah. don't hate it all that much. But I actually just finished it and really, not too long ago. And it's... I, once, I mean, at this point, if you don't know this already, like the game ends properly with Arthur, and then you go in to play John Marston, and it butts up right against the first game. What I don't like about that, though... Yeah. I'll say this. Chapter 6. Yeah. Great ending. Yeah. Epilogue 1, we didn't need... We did not need epilogue no. one. Well, all epilogue, epilogue need, one. All epilogue one needed to be was a montage of of John. It's John, right? Yeah. I because he uses so many different names in the fucking game. I don't yeah, remember. Yeah. John leaving the gang. Well, I mean, he was already he already left by the end of, by chapter six. But um, it could have just been a montage of John doing like odd jobs. 
and getting enough money to build his farm. Right. And then epilogue two could have just been the whole like you protecting your farm with like the Skinner gang. Yeah. And doing like a last couple missions Those and Skinner then, levels were the fucking Skinner, insane. The Skinner brothers were great. Yeah. Um yeah, it, it should have just been like montage of farm. Yeah. In an epilogue where it's just the the Skinner brothers part and the 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 cleanup parts with like Micah and like some of like the um bounty hunting for with Sadie. Yeah. That should have been all it was. Cuz that I, epilogue one was boring as fuck. It was. You're it, working on a farm for uh, the whole- yeah, that you're working on this farm to get money to build your to own your own farm. Right. It's boring. Yeah, the, I think the game wanted you to be because that six comes to a head and it's really tense. There's a lot of shit going on, and it's like done. Okay, right, I, we're I, start, I, yeah. I'm wrong. I just thought of this. Yeah, chapter six ends. Yeah, epilogue one is our the whole John with the Skinner brothers and Micah and everything, and then. Uh, Chapter two should have been Ep- epilogue. Two could have been everything that they fucking showed during the credits, because yeah. that would have been cool. Yeah, where they show like the Pinkertons like following the trail up to, to you, right to the beginning of Red Dead One. Yeah, that would have been cool. They, I think they could have played that out a little bit better. I appreciate just they seeing did it. like yeah. five second clips of them like, oh, here's Micah's dead body. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. 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 Yeah. But yeah, no, that's that's what it could have been. Yeah. Like I would have loved to have seen like more cutscenes or more things happening with the Pinkertons tracking sure. you down to right. the beginning. They of just the first alluded game. to it, and they just, just show like, oh, like they they do like a a uh, Animal House ending where it's like, well, here's what the Pinkertons up are up to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what. The, yeah. It's <laughs> right. Mayor just, Robert Blue Tarski. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Uncle is now Robert <laughs> Mayor Robert Blutarski. Um, I, I mean, uh, all right. So I didn't, it, it, I didn't score um, Half Life or the Black, Black Mesa. Mesa. I, Black Mesa is a solid eight, eight and a half. It, it's it's the same still game. Just being unfinished. Yeah, I think once it's done, like that'll be a nice, big, delightfully awesome package. Uh, Red Dead, I give a nine. Um, I really did enjoy. I like the first one. The second one, I mean. After getting past the slowness of how that game controls, and once you kind of just accepted that that's how that game is, wait, what? Like the slowness, like your movement oh, is yeah, very yeah. everything's very deliberate. But I mean, you ever get those feelings when you think back on a game? You're like, I remember the feelings I had when I was playing it. I get that with that game, so that doesn't happen too often because I think it sat with me long enough that it let me enjoy it that also, way. Also, the, the soundtrack kind of redeemed itself towards the end. Yeah. There's a lot more like really good songs that they yeah. put in at the end. Yeah, created ones like their originals and their. Yeah. There was one. What was the one cover? There was well, a the song. one was the Willie Nelson. There was a Willie Nelson song. Yeah. What was it? Um, but the one I think you're thinking of is like the one where it's. Uh, I think it's at the end of chapter six. Vague. Or no, is it the end of chapter six or epilogue one when you're like, on your way to your farm? Yeah. Like they play it. I don't know. They, there is a. Yeah. There is a song that like a lot of people know uh, they did a cover of it yeah but it's yeah it's it's a really really good game all right ando oh um or we we could pause for tom now i'm gonna i'm gonna pause for yeah he'll do his we'll we'll pause for tom yeah we're gonna just add a hand later um but yeah my i completed all of mine um i mean i know right (laughs) i picked short games (laughs) I didn't pick short games on a per- for I, I usually do, just to clear out some games. But no, I, I don't know. I just end up doing it on purpose for some reason. I mean, on accident, whatever you want to say. Um, <laughs> Words are funny. on purpose and accident. Yeah. <laughs> Christ, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm slowly going into like some kind of stroke fit where I can't talk. Apparently. Um, no, uh, Warrior Land Two. Um, I finished Warrior Land 2. Mm-hmm. That's a fun game, and um, I'm mad I had a weird autistic OCD uh, fit with that game when I was younger, when it came first came out. Because mm-hmm. the way the game acts is like, um, you have to find... There's two treasures in each, game, in each level. One is hidden somewhere in the level, and then the other one you... Uh, have to win in a mini game. Well, they're both mini games, 
But there's a mini game hidden in a level, and then there's a mini game when you beat the stage, when you beat a level. Um, the mini games are really stupid, and again, it, it caused me like I got stressed out when I was little when I was playing it because I was like, "Oh no, you only get one chance." Yeah. Calm down, Spurg. You get another chance after you beat the game. <laughs> um, but it's like the it's it's like a matching game where it's like it flashes like a an enemy. Mm-hmm. on the screen and it's like oh wh- which one was that and you have to pick which one it is okay and then the other one is like there's like a bunch of panels and they flip over and then it'll make a number but you can guess what the number is going to be before time runs out because every panel that flips over it costs you like 50 bucks or whatever um but yeah because I, I got like worried when i first played it because i'm like i want to get everything you're not going to get everything the first time right because uh, what i realized is after you beat the game um, they show you a branching paths of like all levels and which ones have secret exits, like Mario World or whatever. And it shows you which levels have secret ed- exits and um, which branching path will get you an ending. Because there's multiple endings in this fucking Wario game that I didn't know. Huh. Um, so like there's there's at least like four or five endings. Um, but when you beat the game, you can go back to it. Lets you level select. And it shows you which ones you missed a treasure for. Oh, cool. And uh, so you can pick that level that has like a an extra exit, and you can just play through that level again to find the extra extra exit. Um, so that's cool. Um, uh, now that I finally completed it, um, I, I like it a lot more. Although the bosses have a weird mechanic where um, because Wario can't die... Um, I don't. I don't know what when they decided just Wario is just an immortal, um, <laughs> but like if you get hit by a boss, you get like sh- launched up to the ceiling, and there's like a platform up in the ceiling, and you have to like find. There's like a door up there, and you have to like work your way around back to, to the back boss up. room and fight the boss again. I guess that's that's the only punishment. That's they can the give punishment. You. Yeah. And the final boss mm-hmm. takes like three hits, but she is a pain in the ass because she like will launch there's like fire below you and she'll throw bombs down and the 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 gimmick is is that every once in a while fire will shoot out of the ground and if you get hit by the fire you get launched up mm. and you have to fight your way around so what you have to do and this is a stupid thing which took me a while to figure it out because I thought cuz the first hit she throws out an enemy and all you have to do is throw the enemy back at her and that that's a hit. Yeah. But after that, she doesn't she doesn't spit like her machine doesn't spit out enemies. It spits out bombs. So what you have to do is wait for the fire to shoot out of the ground, throw the bomb in the fire, and just pray that the fire geyser is like right below her to hit her. Hmm. And the timing of it is fucking terrible. Yeah. Yeah. So, what system is this on? Uh, Game Boy Color. Okay. Yeah. I thought so. I just they were. Uh, yeah. The, I think they were all on Game Boy, weren't they? Uh, Most of them. Uh, yeah. The first one was Mario Land Three. Mm-hmm. That was on Game Boy, and then Wario Land One. Yeah, they were all like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. Yeah. There was like two on. There was one on the Wii and one on Game Boy GameCube. Yeah. But they weren't that. technically called Wario Land, even though they were Wario Land games. Um, but that was great. I I would probably give that like a six. Okay. Because it's a little stressful on some of the bosses, and uh, the the mini games could have been done a little bit easier because it's like it's all money based. Right. I have, um, I have a quick question before you go on to your next one. Huh. For next year, four in February, are you going to play the Warrior Land game for the Virtual Boy? I. You know what? <laughs> I love that game. <laughs> I can see you sitting at the kitchen table when the fucking VR that I used to give myself I used to give myself painful red headaches yeah. waiting for my mom at Kmart playing playing, playing the, the virtual boy display in Kmart waiting for her to be done shopping. I, that God. was not a good time, but it's a fun. It's a fun like Wario Land on Virtual Boy is actually really fun. Uh, yeah, if they were it, able to port it, like they if have they emulators able, for it. Yeah, does it is mm-hmm. it in red or is it in it's gray? Because I've um, seen it in gray. Yeah, you can change the color, but okay. yeah, you can change it. It doesn't have to be in red. <laughs> um, yeah, because because the, the gimmick is that there's like two layers and he'll yeah, like jump because you to can the go back because there was a Kirby game that came out on the 3ds that was kind kind of played exactly like that. Um, See, so yeah, that was Warrior Land two, uh, Mega Man X five. Wait, um, and they'll play a Mega Man game? I know, right? Well, I don't that, well no, the X series, the X series was one I never really got into because they were like, when Mega Man X first came out, like, 
I was like a little fucking poo babby at those games. Like I was fucking terrible. <laughs> like I I thought I knew Mega Man, but when Mega Man X came out, like uh, I was fucking terrible at those games. <laughs> Cause there are like there's a little bit of a difficulty curve for those games. Right. Plus they play differently because like the way E tanks work and the way heart containers work, it's completely different. It's way changed. Sure. Um but like I never really played much of the X games. I played like some of them here and there, but I never actually completed them. But for four in February, for like the past couple of years in a row, I have pl- I have picked a Mega Man X game, <laughs> and um, this one was X five, and I unfortunately played the one on the Mega Man Legacy Mega Man X Legacy Collection, which didn't have the Guns and Roses names. Oh yeah, which I was disappointed on. They had, <laughs> did they have to take it out? I guess. Uh yeah. Okay. I I don't I I honestly don't know the reasoning behind it because it's not like they're technically using like some of them are very vague references to the Guns and Roses. Maybe like, because they one re- called, realized that Guns N' Roses sucks and they just had to take it out because they felt ashamed. There was one. There's like one called Skyver. A boss is just called the Skyver. Okay. And the reasoning behind that is like the one member of Guns N' Roses at the time. His nickname was High as the Sky. Okay. But they changed it to Skyver. Yeah, that like, that's, that's, that's the Guns N' Roses name. Yeah. Is the boss. Maverick's name was Skyver. I don't know why. I think, it, well, he's a bird. I, I think that's. I think that was a bird Maverick. I don't remember. Oh. Um, but then you had, like, Duff McWhalen and Axel the Red. <laughs> yeah. And uh, 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 Izzy Glow and Slash Tiger, or uh, Grizzly Slash. Um, Do you know the reasoning about why they did that? It's because the one, the one person was, like... Their girlfriend or their husband was like obsessed with Guns N' Roses. Yeah, it was, a, it. it was it the was like a woman's. Her husband was like a yeah. big Guns N' Roses, and I guess it was. I guess now it's ex husband, but <laughs> yeah, that was like she was like just one of the localizers. She was like, yeah, I'm yeah, just gonna do it this. Was just, he it like, was just in the American version, like yeah, the Japanese huh. version. Only, not like the only time so it was ever done that. The way. only time that you can, the only versions of that game where you can get the Guns N' Roses names were. Um, in the actual the original PS one and maybe Sega Saturn version, hmm. and the PS two Mega Man X collection has the actual uh, Guns N' Roses names. Um, but I fucking hated Mega Man X five when I originally played it, like back in the day when it first came out. Hmm. Um, it has a dumb time mechanic. The yeah, the, the point of that game that. it takes place like almost immediately after Mega Man X four, so like. In Mega Man X4, you destroy like this like space colony that Sigma is on. And then in Mega Man X5, it starts out with the colony like falling to Earth. Okay. So like you have uh they say like, oh, the colony's gonna crash in 16 hours. Each time you play a level, that docks two two hours off of that time. Oh. So there's eight Mavericks, um, they give you there's two missions in the game. You have to either find enough mineral, find enough parts for this cannon to shoot at the colony to blow it up or um, find four materials for a space for a space shuttle like parts for like this escape uh, escape pod in this in this like space shuttle All right. to launch like launch a space shuttle into this colony and then Hope that your escape pod, you can escape in time so the sh- shuttle goes and blows up the colony. So the game has like these weird fixed things where it's like um, the first mission, th- they say it's required to do the cannon first and then the shuttle second because it's weird RNG bullshit where it's like the cannon could destroy the colony completely uh-huh. and then you don't need the shuttle parts, but you have to beat the other four Mavericks. To like fully beat the game, I, I I forget how it works. Okay. So like the the cannon could or could not work. Um, the cannon could like maybe destroy some of it. The shuttle may not work. Also, um, whether the shuttle works or not, Zero can die, which is really oh, stupid. Okay. Because he might be able to survive the crash or not from the escape pod. So it's really like up to chance on what kind of like what kind of game you're gonna get. And also depends on the ending. There's three endings. You can get just like you can get a Mega Man you can get the zero ending where he survives and you beat Sigma with zero. That's the zero ending. You can get there's two Mega Man endings. Mega Man die, uh, zero dies 
you can get the ending where Zero dies and it's Mega Man by himself with Zero Saber, or uh, Zero survives and Mega Man just you know works together with Zero to clean up the rest of the Maverick mess. Um, so it's it's random chance on usually what you get. Right. And like save states aren't going to help you because it just doesn't know the game just does not know what it wants to do for an ending most times. It's it's <laughs> fucking weird. So, um, the way the story went, um, you could tell it was de- designed to be the final Mega Man X game. Okay. Because there is like so many fucking references to like earlier games, even Mega Man Classic games. The first boss you fight in the se- in the Sigma levels is the Yellow Devil. Oh, okay. You fight the Yellow Devil in a Mega Man X game. That's the first time you ever fucking do that. And, like, even when you're fighting the bosses, there's, like, a weird static pattern in the background. And sometimes there's, like, a there's a logo. And sometimes it comes in the... You can kind of make out what it is. It's the Dr. Wily symbol. Oh, uh, okay. And they reference, like, if you're Zero and you find Mega Man pods for Mega Man's armor, um, the Dr. Light hologram will... Uh, Zero will talk to Light... Like, hey, I have these weird nightmares about Wily. And that's a reference to Mega Man X4 because if you play Zero Story, it starts out with him having a nightmare of Dr. Wily creating him and Dr. Wily telling him to kill all humans. <laughs> so, like, there's a, there's a lot of references. Like, they, they literally come out and say that, like, Wily was the guy that created Zero and, like, why that was almost the start of, like, the whole Maverick thing. And, um,. Like the ending, like the it's a, I I went like a complete 180 from that game. Like I was starting out like for four in February. I'm like I didn't like this when I first played it. I'm not gonna like it again. I fucking love Mega Man X5. It's it's a very unpopular opinion, but I fucking love that game now. Cool. Um. So that's probably, I would say an eight out of ten. The um the the level design is kind of bad. Um. What ending did you get? I got the zero ending because I okay. wanted to see what it was. Okay. Um, plus, he's a little easier to control in this one compared to X4. Um, but yeah, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Um, I, it, it would be... I, it was just There was a couple problems. Like I said, level design was kind of bad. Yeah. Um, the music was like okay. Um, other than that, the story was great. I was not expecting it to be good. Um, other than that, there was... What the fuck else did I have? Um... Just real quick, there's actually there's a fan game, there's a Mega Man fan game called Mega Man Unlimited. Oh yeah, that, I've, I've that, seen it. Yeah, the the ending of that is like they reference like Zero that Wily actually makes Zero, and like Mega they 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 it's, don't show it, but Mega Man basically dies. And there's that's like, so many fucking theories like about into, that. Yeah, um, because of X Five, there's been so many fucking theories about that game now. Um, oh. Uh, Going on, Mystical Ninja going on. Okay. Um, that uh, from the videos. Oh yeah, okay. That that fucking helps Adam. Adam brought up the screen of all our games. Um, Mystical Ninja going on, um, f- as you've seen from the video, oh. was fucking weird. Oh, no, super weird. You don't um, say. But I loved it. It was a great Legend of Zelda clone. Even though, like I said, it came out before Ocarina of Time. Um. It was fucking amazing. Um, the it was a little short. It was um, there was only f- four or five dungeons. No, there was there was five because there was the main four, and then the final dungeon. So it was like kind of on par with like um, o- not Ocarina of Time, uh, Majora's Mask, because Majora's Mask only had like four dungeons, I think. I have never yeah, because you do the north, north, east, south, and west corners of Termina, because they all had those dungeons, and then there's the moon, there's the moon level, and Majora's Mask. Um, so that's kind of like what um, going on was. Um, the th- that game is just all over the place. I really liked it, um, but I give it a seven. Okay. Um, it was fu- like I said. It was a little. It's a fun little like Legend of Zelda clone. Um, but they give you like these four other characters to play as, and I never really like these three other characters to play as. And I never really used them. I like 
the only time I ever changed to another character was whenever I had to use them for their like specified item. Yeah. I was always using going on. Um, like all of their like special items barely came into play. Um, and they were like all required. Like it was like, you can't go here until you get this item. And I'm like, okay, I did the thing to get the item. Now, when am I going to use it? And then it was like, never, it was bare. Like, Hmm. Uh, it was only like uh, Abyssimaru has like this like shrinking power that you get later in the game, and it was used maybe t- two or three times after that. Yeah, it was like oh I got to shrink to get into this dungeon, oh I got to shrink to go in this one room to get like maybe a key I don't remember, mm-hmm. um, and that was like a little annoying. Though uh, Yay, the mermaid girl, the ninja girl, she has the ability to turn into a mermaid, and literally the only time. Like, one of the major times that you used her to be a mermaid was to get into the final dungeon, like, the, the fourth dungeon, which was, like, a submarine. So you had to, like, use her to swim <laughs> under. Submarine. Yeah, it was, like, it was really fucking so weird. Random. It was, like, really weird. So it was, like, I was, like, eh. I just wish they could have been used a, a little bit, like, more. Because mm. they were really interesting. Like, the uh, Sasuke, the robot kid... His ability was to like, like he has like a jet pack, and that was used maybe twice. I, they just weren't implemented well. Um, but it was, it was fun. It was, it was somewhere in between Banjo Kazooie one and two, where some of the like areas, like the open world areas, like had a lot to do, but then had nothing to do. Yeah, yeah. they were like empty, and it was weird. Didn't it was quite like, have the the ukulele problem. No, oh, God. like it was it was just really awkward at times. Um, there's a whole section of Japan that they keep talking about towards the end of the game that you're going to go to, and then you don't go yeah. there. <laughs> it, it was, was really meant annoying. for the sequel, or was cut content? No, it will. The their 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 the way of getting around it was was like. Oh, uh, I don't remember the area in Japan. I would say it was like it was like Kyushu or whatever. It was like, oh, we got to go to Kyushu to save this person or whatever. And then you go there, and then all of the section of Kyushu of Japan gets like lifted up into space. Oh, and then the last dungeon is apparently Kyushu, but oh. it doesn't really implement it that well. It's like part dungeon, and then you're outside running around, like yeah. out in the world. And then you go back in the dungeon. It, it's weird. It's weird how they how they go about it. But um, uh, they do a lot. Uh, the last three bosses are uh, giant robot battles, which I fucking loved. Great. Those are silly. Yeah, that was, it, it that was, was so the ridiculous. ridiculous part it was of literally it. a lot. Like the boss for the submarine level was a robot boss fight, and then the last two boss fights in the end of the game were robot fights. I bet you that submarine boss was like a kraken or some shit. Close. It was a squid. Yeah. Well, close yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah. Practically, it was like an octopus. Fa- <laughs> yeah. It was a it was a giant like robot with an octopus face or whatever. Yeah. There you go. Um, Good. The only down the one big downside the another downside was to when you you don't just find the items you have to do like a training thing to earn the items mm. and they're really fucking annoying. Yeah. Like there was one it was like climb this tower in a set time limit, but watch out for the spike. So it's like it was annoying. Um. But yeah, seven out of ten. It was fine. I would still check it out. Um, it, it's a fun game, fun little like action adventure game. Uh, Kirby Star Allies, uh, fucking amazing. Is that that Switch right? It was for the Switch. Yeah. I I fucking love that game. That was um, it, I don't I don't know how to describe it. It has like the whole final area had a like a um. To you have to play it to like experience it because it was like it just goes all out. It's just fucking crazy for a Kirby game. Like the past Kirby games are fucking amazing in the the last act of them. Okay. Like Star Allies, Ro, uh, Robobot. Um, uh, what the fuck was the, there was one? Um, the final boss was a, a B. What the fuck one was that? Triple Deluxe, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is that 3DS one? It's a 3DS one, okay. yeah. I think I have that one. Um, yeah, it, it it just goes batshit insane with the like the level design, the like the boss fights. It's fucking great. It's like shit I was not expecting in a Kirby game. Huh. Um, there's like a ton of references to like older games. Um, 
The music is fucking great. Um, weird to say a fucking game, a game about a little like pink alien mm-hmm. is actually good. A little kids, like a kid friendly looking yeah. a, a character. A babby game, basically. Yeah, it, it looks like a babby game, but they, there's there's more to it. Um, that one I would probably give nine out of ten. Wow, that was probably my favorite one okay. out of the four. Um, there's so like at like you think you've beaten the game and then you fucking didn't. Yeah. It unlocks like like all the games. It unlocks like more modes and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, they they included like a because um, in the main game you it's four players and the first player always has to be Kirby and then the other three are like just regular random monsters or enemies. Sure. Right. Um, after you beat the game, it unlocks a mode where you can just play as any of the enemies in the game, even bosses from past Kirby games. Huh. It's fucking great. Yeah, I heard there's like DLC that brings some characters back and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like you can play through the game as uh, Deroach, the fuck the the rat uh, bandit from Squeak Squad, right? Which is probably one of my favorite Kirby games up until I played Star, Star Allies. Star Allies is my favorite. It's probably my favorite Kirby game, like of all time. Really? At this point, High yeah. Praise. Yeah. Yeah, because like for the longest time it was uh, uh, Squeak Squad. That's for the DS. That was a really fun one, but yeah, Star Allies is probably the best Impressive. one I've played in a long time. Pretty cool. Um, but f- fucking great, great picks I've had, and you guys got some decent ones in there too. Yeah. Yeah, I um, liked all the games that I played. It's just, I, to me, I, I'll be completely honest, February was not a good month for me. It was just, it, I, I was working a lot. I was... I was a bit stressed out about some stuff. There, there was some stuff going on with me, so it was just, I, I just did not have a lot of time to play. Unfortunately, uh, that's is, why I picked <laughs> short games. Right. I wish I would have picked. I wish instead of picking Octopath, I think. I think honestly, the way my month went, I should have just picked something shorter. But the last few years, I've, I like I said, I try to pick some an RPG I'm like in the middle of, so it like gets me to finish it, and then it's it. I still just like it. I still just get a like, like worn out with it. So I try it's not to get. I try to pick games that are not similar, so I don't get burnt out on them. Yeah, yeah I, I think see that missing an oxen free are a little bit too similar in their I just, play I, style and stuff. So I had to get some like, I mean like Kirby, Mega Man, and Wario are platformers. But there's the mechanics behind them are different. Yeah, so, like, they're I definitely wasn't, different playing. Like games. I wasn't gonna be burnt out on them. Yeah, I think I, the longest game out of all the four was probably Going On. That one probably took me the longest to complete. Yeah. Actually, mine. I know. I look at it. I had a a 2D platformer. I had a open world third person. <laughs> I had a uh, third person action game and a first person shooter. Yeah. 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 So yours were pretty all over the place. Yeah. Hey Tom, it looks like some you've got something to say. Do you? <laughs> hey guys, it's Tom. Uh, I guess I'm supposed to talk about four in February, even though I'm not actually here or there during this podcast. Anyway, so uh, for four in February, I beat all four of my games. I played Prey, um, Resident Evil Two Remake. Canarium and Perception. Um, I beat Prey pretty early. I was already in the midst of that game uh, as 4 in February was starting. Um, But I'm not usually one to play a bunch of games at once. Uh, I think maybe I mentioned this last year um, in a previous 4 in February video. But um, usually I play one or two games at a time. Um, and I don't often get a chance to play games. So normally it's whatever I'm playing on PC and whatever I'm playing on console at the time. So I decided that, you know, it made the most sense that, uh, Prey be included. Um, I beat that, like I said, pretty early. Uh, I want to think it was even, it was before the first video, um, for four in February, it went up. And uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's got like a combination of like System Shock and Bioshock, and um, it's a, it's a good game. I really enjoyed it. Um, a lot of the storytelling is 
done in similar ways to System Shock and Bioshock and things like that. Um, your upgrade systems, things like that. Um, the only thing I was really disappointed in in the game was... Um, like so when when we talked i think in bioshock you know it was just kind of like oh you kind of fight the same enemies you know regular guy guy with gun you know large guy etc um and and that's okay when the enemies look different but i think my biggest issue with um prey was that because you're always fighting the typhon they're always kind of the same thing, right? So it's like the head crab looking Typhon and then the humanoid looking Typhon and then the mind control one and the technopath. And that's kind of, oh, and the cystoid ones. And that that's kind of it. Um, they all have different properties and stuff like that. You know, there's the electro Typhons and stuff like that. But you're basically fighting the same enemy throughout the game. Um, and it also kind of feels like there were certain parts of the game where I kind of felt like what I was doing didn't matter. Uh, like there was an area where I would, I had saved a bunch of people in this area and, um, you know, stop them from being attacked and lock the area down and whatever. And I came back later and like all of those people were just gone or dead and the Typhon had taken back over. So it just kind of felt like that was a set piece. And then when I came back later, it was like it was back to square one basically because I had turned on power or whatever and the power was back off and you know, the enemies were back and whatever. Um, but I really did enjoy the game. I liked the story. Um, the ending was interesting. I liked it. You kind of feel where it's going to go, um, as the game progresses. And if you're, if you've played the game, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, but there's like little, story beats that happen where you're kind of like, okay, I think I know where this is going to go. And it pretty much goes where if you have an idea when you're playing the game, that's where you think it's going to go. I can almost guarantee you that's where it's headed. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Uh, Resident Evil two, I had initially decided that if I had beat one campaign that I was going to consider it complete. Um, and, but I ended up beating both, um, Leon and Claire's campaigns. And I know a lot of people did uh, Leon A, Claire B, but um, I asked a couple of people on Twitter if it really mattered if you did Leon A, Claire B, or Claire A, Leon B. It didn't really seem like it changed all that much um, in terms of uh, the length of the story. I did feel like in Claire A... I played the game longer. Now, I don't know if that's because all of these areas were fresh to me and stuff like that. Um, but I did, I did feel like Leon B went by much faster than Claire A did. Um, honestly, I think just judging from playing again, Claire A, Leon B, I felt like Claire's story has more to do with, the game itself. I know that sounds kind of weird, but like, like Claire's story works within the confines of Birkin and his wife and all of that stuff. And that's why you keep seeing Birkin, right? That's why you keep fighting Birkin. Um, but with Leon's story, it's like, okay, you know, you start at the police station and you fight Birkin. Okay. Well, why do we fight Birkin? I don't know. He just kind of shows up okay. And you run away from Mr. X and all that stuff. And, and it is, and I'm really happy that Mr. X was the last boss for Leon. Um, it made more sense, but again, it, I feel like, and this is what I said when I, I don't know if I mentioned it on a podcast or in a video, but I almost felt like it should have been a campaign as Birkin and B campaign as Mr. X. Um, and Mr. X shouldn't have appeared in campaign a or conversely, he shouldn't have appeared in Claire's campaign and only appeared in Leon's campaign. Um, cause I felt like once we got to Mr. X, like Mr. X, by the way, is totally worth all the memes. Um, but 
when we got to him as Leon, I'm like, great, this is how we're going to close this out. This feels good. Um, but with Claire, it was just kind of like, oh, we watched him, excuse me, we watched him kind of get ripped apart by a, uh, by Birkin. And then that's kind of it for Mr. X in Claire's campaign. So I really enjoyed the game. I have always loved Resident Evil 2. Um, and with this and DMC five, um, Capcom are clearly back on their shit. Um, and I know that, uh, Resident Evil three remake is already in development. Um, so that makes me happy because Nemesis, first of all, Nemesis is great. Uh, quite possibly my favorite Resident Evil quote unquote villain of all time, um, is Nemesis. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, Canarium was the third game that I beat. Um, it was, and I played it on our, uh, extra life stream for, I think 2017. Um, if you watch that and as bird would have made the joke, so I'll do it for him. You didn't watch it because no one did, but, um, it was, it's a first person, um, adventure puzzle game. Yeah, it's more of a puzzle game because you don't technically fight any monsters. You mostly just run away from them and use puzzles to progress. Um, it's a really, really good game, but it doesn't give you a lot of... Like, you get a, a general idea of what the plot of the game is, but you really don't get it, get it until the very end of the game. Um, and there are multiple endings to the game. Um but there are very obvious multiple endings. Um, but you just to briefly summarize the game, you are uh, a scientist in working in the Antarctic and you're trying to discover why you're there. Um, you were sitting in a room with a machine and it makes your head hurt and blah, 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 blah. And you've got this little wrist thing that looks like a, like a diving watch basically. Um, so you're basically trying to figure out what's going on um, and you go down into these caves and you find all these bas reliefs and stuff like that uh, depicting, you know, this ancient race and all this other stuff. It's very Lovecraftian um, and it's a very good game um, in terms of uh, making you feel tension and stuff like that. But once I came to the realization that I really wasn't going to fight any enemies, the game kind of lost me there. Um, I was hoping that, you know, the game did a very good job of building the tension, but not necessarily of keeping it there. Uh, because again, once I, once I realized that I wasn't going to have to fight anything, I was just kind of like, all right, well, that's, that's it. Like, I don't have to worry about anything. Like I can take as long as I want to do this or whatever. Or if it did look like an enemy was going to attack you, it was almost always like, oh no, I'm having a fever dream. Um, but it was fun. Uh, like I said, the two endings that you can do are very blatant. One is basically, oh, you're at the end of the game. Do you want to stop now or keep going? Is basically the endings, if that makes any sense, without spoiling it. It's like, oh, you can end the game here or you can keep going. Well, of course. I mean, those are the two most blatantly obvious endings ever. So anyway. Uh, but it was really good. The ending, the the continue ending is very, very weird and very, very Lovecraftian. And it's so goofy and I loved it. It was very, um, yeah, it was very intense and it was very, not silly, but like it goes to that Lovecraftian level of like, okay, you decided you were going to keep going with the story. Now things get extra weird. Now they get extra crazy. So it was cool and I enjoyed it, um, but it was very short. I think I beat it in under four hours. Um, and my last game was Perception. Um, and that is a game that I got on a Steam sale a long time ago. And it was, I think I got, I beat it in like six hours. Um, you basically, you play, a, I don't remember the character's name, but you basically uh, play as a blind woman and you're going into this old house because you keep seeing, um, you keep having flashbacks, uh, or like memories of things 
in the house. Um, so it was like a, a rope and uh, a tree and some other stuff. Um, so the way that the mechanics of the game work is that you can't see anything unless something is making a noise. Um, but you do have like a cane that you can tap on the ground and it sort of does like an echolocation thing, which is, it's a, it's a really cool mechanic and that builds the tension of the game because standing still trying to avoid an enemy, you can't necessarily, you can't necessarily see what's going on unless something makes a noise. So if you're not moving or making noise and there's nothing in the room to make noise, it's just a black screen, which is really, really intense. Um, and it's very cool. Um, the game was a lot different than I was expecting. So I'm tr going to try not to spoil the game, but basically what happens is, is that each of these items that you're having these flashbacks about, um, you find throughout the house. So like the first one you pick up, um, it sort of shows you how this person died. So like each area is like each section of the game is about a different person that lived in the house. So the first area that you do um, is all about this couple and one of them's a doctor and you go through the whole area and like all the items that you pick up and touch and they sort of like give you memory flashbacks, right? They like, like you pick up an item and it plays like a memory, like dialogue when you pick it up. It's, it's an interesting mechanic. Um, so that whole first area is about this couple. And then after you complete that section of the game, you go out to the tree in the back, which is like the big important set piece. Um, and when you go back to the house, it's like further back in time and the house layout is different and there are different things in different places. Um, and then you're dealing with a different person that lived in the house. So as you go basically further, fur further and further back in time in this house, you're dealing with a different person's story, um, which I thought was interesting. There is a part of the game that's kind of... And Bird... <laughs> When Bird and I talked about it, because he's played, I think, most of the game, but not all of it. And uh, he got to the section that I'm talking about. And he said, if you're going to talk to um, Ando or Adam about the game, because it's, it's an interesting game. And it's really, it's very, um, it's got a very interesting story. Um, he said, but if you're going to talk to Ando and Adam about the game, uh, having not played it, don't tell them this part of the game because it makes the game sound stupid. And he's right. It does sound stupid. And if you've played the game, I believe it's the third area. Um, there are some things that you're up against in that area that are very, very like, like it works in the context of the story, but just to say, Oh, this is the thing you're up against in this area. Sounds really stupid when you have to say it out loud. Um, so I won't, but if you're going to play it uh, again, it's a short, like four to six hour game. So if you're going to play it, you'll know what I'm talking about. And again, you'll find that it works in the context of the game, but, um, saying it out loud seems pretty stupid. Um, unfortunately, I think it was the game that I liked the least. Um, the mechanics of the game were fun and interesting. Um, and you're, Basically, if you make too much noise, it says that the house is listening, right? So basically, if you make too much noise, uh, there's an entity that's sort of, it's like a ghostly figure, and it sort of floats around the house, and it can attack you. And I never, not one time, got attacked by the presence. Uh, the game felt, about halfway through, felt more like a get this story and not necessarily a horror game. I, I stopped being, I stopped feeling tension with the game about an hour and a half in. Um, because once I found out that once I figured out a way that I could easily avoid getting attacked by the presence, um, the game, there was no tension in the game for me. Um, and there are specific times in the game where it says that they, 
that the house can't hear you. Um, and those are sections where you need to explore and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I would say it was probably my least favorite game, but it was still really good. And the mechanics of the game really worked though. I'm not sure if it could have been a full fledged, whatever, eight to 10 hour game. Um, the story was very direct, which was good. And we got the information we needed and, and none of the information we didn't, but the mechanics of the game, I don't think could have allowed for a much longer game than it was without adding different features. Um, but yeah, so that was my four in February, uh, back to these chuckle fucks. Um, but yeah, that was, okay. that was four in February. I mean, I think we did. Okay. Does anybody else want to talk about what, what else they've been playing recently? Anything else know. going on? I'm trying to, well, I'm still on Resident Evil 2. Uh, have, the wife won't let me play it without her. So that it's getting time <laughs> to play that. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3, which is just exactly what you think it is. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about Do Kingdom Hearts. Do you want to talk about Kingdom Hearts 3? Well, not about Kingdom Hearts 3, but just Kingdom Hearts in general. It, it's it's a it's a fuckery of a game. It's yeah. fun. Well, this is this is my problem. Was that um, for a while I was looking for the uh, that story so far. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts could not find it anywhere. I ended up finding it because I was like, I want to play because I I knew what it was, and it's a collection of like goddamn. It's a collection yeah, of everything. Yeah. yeah, right. So I was I was looking forever for that, and um, because I was like, well, I could just buy because all it is. Is um, it's Kingdom Hearts one and a half and two and a half on disc, like that disc, yeah, and then it's the disc of um, the 2.8 yeah. collection, yeah, and it's got all the side that's games. all that is. So I was like, well, I could just, I mean, if I, I mean, if I really can't find story so far, I can just get both of them, and to buy both of them is like triple of what the story so far was costing. Right. Because story so far was like $33. And to buy, not triple, but I mean like to buy both of them separately was like would have been like $100. Yeah. So I was like, well, fuck it. And then I'm fine eventually. And um, I was I started to play Kingdom Hearts 1 on that, like the final mix Kingdom Hearts yeah. 1.5. I started to play some of that, and I was just like, I was like, because I want to play an older one to kind of remember what this game series is about, but not get that fully in deep it, like in depth that, with yeah. it. So I was like, I'll play one, and I got I got to maybe um, Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, you're which isn't that far in the game. No. And I remembered how much I hate Alice in Wonderland world. Yeah, because all it is is just a series of rooms. Yeah. And it's boring. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's bad. Okay, so I played I'm, it recently. It's yeah. bad. Yeah, it so, sucks. Why are you playing this shit game? Yeah. So, I'm, so <laughs> what I did was crazy. I was like, all right, let's go down the timeline of which games. I was like, I'm not going to play them in, in release order. I'm going to go by chronological order. So so I was looking Birth at by that. sleep, yeah. Well, no. It's that Union X back cover oh, cross sakes. movie. Okay. So I watched that. Because that's technically like the first thing. Yeah. Right. That's so, like based on like the the mobile game or something, right? It's a movie that's based off of like the mobile game. Um, <laughs> Such but a it, fucking. And it's like before everything. So I, I watched that, and the movie's fine. Like it's fine as a movie. Sure. It do, it like barely feels like anything related to Kingdom Hearts because all the characters in it are like. They look like original character, do not steal furry characters from like a, a Final Fantasy world because yeah. they all wear like animal masks. Like that's what these characters it's like are. Animal mask hood. Yeah, yeah. I've watched but a I watched a lot of videos about but, Kingdom Hearts recently. But one like character that looks like he's from Organization Thirteen because yeah. he's wearing a black hood. Um, so I watched that and then I and then I was like, well, what's next? And then next is um, Birth by Sleep. Yeah. So like I play I'm. Almost done, and I'm, I'm I'm like again. I have Resident Evil Two sitting there. I'm like I could be playing Resident Evil Two, right? But yeah, I'm I could playing, be playing a good game. <laughs> but I'm playing Kingdom Hearts because I, <laughs> the initial thought was I really want Kingdom Hearts Three, but I don't know what the fuck's going on in the story. Yeah. So let me play an older game to maybe get me into it. Yeah. Because from what I heard, Three is like a lot about the characters from Birth by Sleep. There's yeah. a lot of references to them. So I was like, I never played Birth by Sleep, so let's play that. And uh, I'm almost done with one one playthrough of it with as uh, Terra. I picked okay. Terra. Yeah. And Terra save. Yes. Um, 
I don't even know what the hell that is. Res- Resident Evil Revelations reference. Oh, that's what that fuck. is. You. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like because I was like, I'll just I'll play one quick playthrough as a character in, in Kingdom Hearts: Birth by Sleep, mm. and then go back to Resident Evil Two. So I'm almost at the end of like Terra's playthrough, and that game's okay. Yeah, it's it's just okay. It's good. And you could but tell. It's just a, you could fucking tell it's a PSP game when yeah. you're playing it because the quality of like cutscenes and everything. Yeah, I'm good. into it though. I'm really fucking into it because I do like the, um, because I never played any of the in between games besides like some of Chain of Memories and some of Three Fifty Eight over two okay. days. Like I barely played. I played some of those. Yeah, he got the name of that right on the first try. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm like, I can't even. I'm like. Was that I played, right? Was that I right? played enough <laughs> of it. I've played enough of it to know what it was called. Okay. <laughs> um, but and I like those games, but I never really got through them. But I like Birth by Sleep as an origin story. Yeah. Because there's a lot of shit in that game that like I didn't know that barely got referenced in like Kingdom Hearts one and two. Right. Because like from one and two, you're just to believe that Maleficent's world was destroyed in the like they don't really say how. They're just like, oh, Maleficent's world is destroyed, so she's just looking for a new kingdom to rule. Yeah. That fucking happens in Birth by Sleep, and I fucking love that. I'm like, I'm glad that we're finally, that I'm seeing... You're seeing things that they The origin meant. of, like, whole, the, all of, like, Maleficent's story. Yeah. Because it's fucking crazy. Yeah. And she's in three. She, oh, I, I figured yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah. They, they make an appearance. Her and, and her. Pete. Yeah, Pete, the forced rival of fucking Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> That's the one thing I never got over is Pete being and Pete being like your rival. Right. Pete's being Pete is your kuze. Yeah. <laughs> in fucking Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh. I, I saw I saw a picture recently. It's like Pete in his like weird Kingdom Hearts outfit, like standing next to a bunch of like the Final Fantasy looking characters. Is like it just said like <laughs> Art style clash much? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, fu- fucking like crazy. Yeah, like crazy. Um, oh my! But, I mean, I'm gonna f- probably finish Birth by Sleep soon yeah. at some point, and I'm gonna go back and forth. Like that's what I'm doing right now. I'm playing Birth by Sleep and Pokemon Crystal at the same time. Um, but as soon as I finish Terra Story, I'm probably gonna go back to Risen Evil Two. I might start it. over because. I kind of bubble fucked around. I stopped in the middle. Like I just got at Mister X triggered, like him showing up in the game. Yeah, I'm playing as Claire, and I've been kind of bumble fucking around. So I'm probably just going to start fresh. That's not a bad thing, especially to get the story as a whole. Yeah. So I'm watching. Oh, and uh, (laughs) if we're gonna do what we're. I was gonna say quickly uh, because I think we're already over an hour. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I just started watching Deadly Class. Not. Umbrella Academy. Okay. I'm watching Deadly Class, and we're two episodes in. And it's really good. It has a really okay. good like Watchmen feel to it because it takes place in the 80s. Okay. So like, it's really n- awesome fucking 80s aesthetic to the show. Like the music's awesome. Like the set design's awesome. Like the like the like the character I design is really like cool. Watchmen. I never read the comics, but if you want like a good show with a really cool like 80s feel, watch that show. It's on Sci-Fi. Okay. I'm gonna check it out. All right, I'll go pretty quick here. So, uh, I got uh, everyone else is playing Resident Evil Two. I got Far Cry New Dawn. Uh, I'm sorry. I've been playing that. <laughs> it's uh, it's got some. It's like post apocalypse. Uh, does anyone in this room care about spoilers for Far Cry Five? I already know what happens. Okay, I kind of do, but don't care. I cared for a while because I thought I was actually going to play the game, and I said that about four, and I never played four. So go ahead. Well, but by saying that it's post-apocalypse, I, it kind of gives... Is it because it, of what happens in five? Yes. Okay. Basically, what happens at the end of five is you're about to arrest arrest the Joseph C., the big, crazy cult boss, and... Five fucking, is the America one, right? What's that? Yeah. Five is the one in America. Yeah, that's okay. the one that's set in Montana. And fucking nuke drops. Apparently, like, outside of Montana, like, there's, like, like civil war going around everywhere, and just, like, the whole world is to shit. So it's, like, 17 years later, one of the main characters is, like, the daughter that gets born from Joseph, uh, or, uh, what's his name? Nick Rye, the, 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 pl- the pilot who's, like, your buddy. Like, okay, his yeah. daughter is one of your, your buddies in okay. the, uh, in the new one. So, the, the, the bad guys are just like, 
oh, we, like, we dress up in, like, motorcycle helmets and, like, like football, like, pads. Mad and Max. we just And right. we just go around terrorizing people. And the they're kind of lame. It's just these two sisters. And, like... The beginning is like, oh, we beat this. We beat one of your friends to death with a with a with a with a helmet, <laughs> and they're kind of lame compared yeah. to like the creepiness of like the cult the yeah. last one and like Far so Cry just, Four being like the uh, like having like the Mid- dictate like the evil dictator. So and it's, it's not just... like they're they're not menacing, but like like compared to some of the other ones, it just falls flat and like. Okay, like we're gonna we're gonna come and kill a bunch of your people because you're you're making things hard for us. Well, what like it's 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 a it's little... like the it's like the clowns from Akira, the the biker gang, the clown yeah. Biker. Like they they didn't have any motivation. They were just like we're just a biker gang in like a post apocalyptic Tokyo. So, well, fuck Tom and what he's doing. So <laughs> now, he already had his time. <laughs> he already, he had we his already talked over him. All right. Well, that was our that was uh, this month's four podcast. This four in February discussion and what we've been doing and what we're, we're so playing. So we're late with the podcast. I mean, we're not late with the podcast at all. No, you don't know what you're talking about. Nope, nothing. <laughs> all right, nothing well, was done. That's no. it. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Outro music. Bye. 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 <laughs>